Hey guys, and welcome to Idaho Fly Life. My name is John. Today we're going to be tying a peacock woolly. This is a fantastic pattern and one that I always have with me when I'm out fishing. Uh, you fish on a dead drift, you can strip it. Uh, it's just a great all around pattern. It's not very hard to tie. So let's get into it here. Now, the hook I have in the vise today is a Mustad 9671. It's a two extra heavy, three extra long streamer hook. And the bead that I've got on that hook is a 530 seconds tungsten bead. Now it doesn't have to be tungsten, you can use a brass bead as well. I just like the tungsten because I think it sinks a little bit faster and I don't have to use as many split shot. So we're gonna start by using 15 thousandths lead free wire as a weight. I'm gonna do about 13 wraps. When you're done wrapping, you want to break off each end by helicoptering. Now with lead wire, realistically, you can just pull with this lead free wire. You've got to helicopter each end off to make it look right. And you'll take those wraps and you'll jam them up into the bead. Now I'm going to start my thread. The thread that I've chosen to use today is UTC 70 in black. And I'm going to start my thread right behind that wire. I'm gonna make a thread dam right there. And then I'm gonna try and build that thread dam. Oh, sorry, I bumped it a little bit here. I'm gonna build that thread dam right up onto the lead wraps. When I get to the end here, I've worked through those lead wraps. I'm gonna spin that bobbin counterclockwise so that the, th uh, the thread uncords. Makes it a little bit easier to work with here. I'm going to wrap right back over and make nice smooth wraps over that wire until I get back to that thread dam. Clean it up a little bit. Then I'll work that thread back with touching wraps, basically right back to the barb of the hook. The first material here that I'm going to be tying in is marabou. This is black marabou, and it's fantastic tailing material, but the best practice on this is to get it just a little bit damp so it's easier to tie in. So it'll be one plume, and I'm going to measure this against the hook and try and get a whole hook from, from the front of the eye all the way to the bend. You get it pretty close. If you have to err on one side or another, err on the side of being a little long. We're gonna take one wrap over, get it nice and tight, and then take a few more touching wraps, trying not to break your thread on that hook point, which is really easy to do with UTC 70. And then I'm gonna wrap forward. I'm gonna make this nice and clean. It's gonna to touch, try and get touching wraps all the way forward here. I jump just a little bit. We're gonna go basically right to the back of where that lead free wire ends. That's why I'm lifting up here. I'm just checking exactly where I am. All right, once you get to that wire, go ahead and cut out the excess close. Then clean those butt ends up. And then again, I'm gonna wrap back to where I tied in the tail so that I can tie in my wire, making that body nice and smooth. You get pretty close to the tail there. First material is going to be this small chartreuse ultra wire. Hold that at a 45 degree angle. Take two wraps and then pull that wire back. Now I'm going to go about a third of the body here. I like this wire to be very secure. It's terrible when you get to the end and you pull out your wire because you didn't secure it well enough. So make sure you're putting quite a bit of pressure here as you wrap this wire and bind it down. Okay, now for our hackle. And the way I size this hackle, this is a just regular strung hackle. It comes in a bugger pack from Whiting Farms. 
Um, the way I size this hackle is I like to be one size over. So if I'm tying a 10 today, then I'm gonna go ahead and top, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and pull a hackle that is about an eight on the hackle gauge. What I'm gonna do is get a tying point by just pulling those barbs back on the hackle like so. Now, you, there is a natural curve to these hackle fibers. You see, you want the curve of the hackle fiber, or excuse me, the hackle feather, you want the curved side facing down toward the hook. Come in here at a 45 degree angle again, take two wraps, and then I do pull this hackle just a little bit back and make sure that it's back, that where I, where those initial barbs start is behind the start of the tail so that this hackle wraps correctly. And then I'm gonna bind the rest of that hackle tip down go. Again, we'll wrap back basically right to the tail. All right, now it's time to tie in our peacock. And peacock is pretty fragile. And I do tie this peacock in by the tips, but there's a little bit of a trick to this. If you line up the tips pretty well, you can see the one up here is a little bit shorter. And then you take your scissors and you cut flat. You've cut out those brittle tips and it's square and pretty easy to tie in. Again, we'll take it down here, 45 degree angle, take one wrap over the top, and then bind it down forward. And then wrap back through. Now when you get back here, I actually like to take all the materials in my index finger and thumb and hold them so that I can bind them down right to the start of that tail. And then we're gonna wrap forward we're going to leave our thread right behind the bead. So with tying, the last material you tied is the first material you wrap. So in this case, it's going to be our peacock curl. And we're going to start that right behind the tail here. Excuse me, right in front of the tail. Don't try and go behind the tail. There's no hook back there. And then we'll wrap forward here. What I'm trying to do and I'm hoping that it's picking this up, is I'm trying to keep all of the hurl together in one line, because that makes a nice, smooth body. I don't know if I mentioned, on a size 10, I'm using five strands of peacock hurl, and I add one strand of peacock hurl every step up I go from there. So size eight, you'd use six. Size six, you would use seven. So we'll wrap forward all the way to behind the bead. And then I like to give an extra wrap. You can kind of see here how that collar is a little shy. It's a little bit uh, shorter than everything else. So I like to give an extra wrap to thicken up that collar and make kind of a kind of a tube with this fly. Uh, it's gonna taper just a hair toward the front and that's what you want. And then we'll, we'll tie this material down. So you saw that I did one in front of the hurl, two behind, one in front, two behind. You'll come in here and trim out the excess. The next material we're gonna wrap here is gonna be our hackle. Get that wire out of the way. And again, right in front of the tail, you go ahead and stand this hackle straight up and then start wrapping. That first wrap should be right in front of the tail there. And then you'll open spiral this on the way up. So. It's a, it's a Palmer wrapping technique. Instead of laying one wrap in next to the other, I'm doing an open spiral on the way up. It kind of gives it a, a segmented look all by itself. And then when you get to the front here, you want to make sure that those hackle fibers are standing straight up. Take at least one complete turn. That was basically one and a half there. And with this hackle straight down, we'll tie that off as well. So one in front, two behind, and then one more in front, and then two more behind. Then we'll come in with the, just the very tips of your scissors. So I'm only opening them about that much. I'm gonna come straight in, you'll feel the stem, and then just push to trim that hackle out. All right, last step here is our wire. On the wire, I'm gonna go ahead and counter wrap the wire. So 
your traditional wrap is this direction, standard, over the top. You're gonna go the other direction. This is gonna lock in, as long as I don't trap too many hackles, it's gonna lock in the peacock curl and the hackle. And the best way to wrap this wire that I've found is just to act like the hackle isn't there as you're wrapping. Wrap as you normally would, and you'll trap the least amount of fibers here. When you get to the front, same thing, we'll go ahead and tie that off. One in the front, two behind it, one in front, two behind it. And we're building a nice head on that fly. I'm going to adjust this vise so if it gets a little bit shaky, I'll know why. I want you to see the front of this fly and how it looks. So you'll see there's a little bit of a head. Let me find my bodkin. There's a little bit of a head already on this fly right here. That little collar. So all I'm going to do from there is preen this back just a little bit, all the hackle fibers, and lay a couple more wraps in there. Do the same thing on the bottom, a couple more wraps, and then do a five turn whip finish, and you're done. This fly is done, it's ready to fish. One, two, three, four, five. And I do whip finish kind of on the back of the bead, you'll see that there. Uh, the reason that I do that is it locks everything just behind that bead into place. And then when you're done with that whip finish, you can pull your bobbin up and just pull. Give it a little bit of tension so that it locks everything in. If you'd like to add head cement here, you can, but I'm just gonna come in here and clip out my thread. And that fly is done. Let me move a little bit back here so you can see it a little bit better. And that is a beadhead peacock woolly. Little shaky. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna do a full view so you can get the benefit of seeing what that entire fly looks like. I've got one errant tail fiber here. Just preen them back. Look, fantastic fly. I love this fly. Like I said, it, it's in a fly box. If I'm going out fishing, it's in one of my fly boxes every time. And I don't know. I, I don't know that I would want to go out without it. It's been so productive for me. Uh, if you'd like to see this particular fly catching fish, you can go back to the video that I just did uh, fishing a small stream here in Idaho. We caught all of our fish on this fly. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, don't think there's anything else. I'll see you next time. I'm going to have another fishing video, and then we'll tie a fly. Depending on what fly catches the most, we'll go ahead and tie a fly based on that. You guys have a great day. Out.